I'm saying to my people, come home and experience it. The full expression of the black experience in the Orthodox Church would be absolutely magnificent. It would be a display of prayer, brokenness, and total surrender to God. How do we get our black brethren into the church? From what I have taught, from what I have seen so far, when they ask me questions, the reason why I am Orthodox is because I knocked and I asked and I begged and I asked God to show me and I was led to the Orthodox Church. So it's going to take a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting, and a lot of reasoning. But even if they walk away and say, I don't want that, we still must pray. Because as I am praying, my brothers are now coming around. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Where do you see on our side, within our community, the church, where is the state of the missional effort to the African diaspora here in the Americas, the West Indies and the Caribbean? Where do you believe in your opinion? Where are we today? And where you would hope to see us in the coming years? I think this is the reason why we are here today, because there is, uh, when we're talking about missional efforts to the Black American, I like using ADOS, American Descendants of Slaves, because that's what we are. I think this is what we're, we're talking about here today. Now, are there individual people who are doing missionary work for all people, not so much just Black people, for all people? Yes, they're probably doing very good work. But what we're talking about, we're talking about the structure, the nuclear family of the black person, okay? There is a kinetic opportunity there. The, the, the forward movement, uh, the, 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 the stamina to be able to go after this. Now, I don't see a whole lot going on, but I don't know if that's intentional. That's not, I don't think that's intentional. We, we may have people who don't want to see a diversity in the church. Um, we have people who have a longing to see a diversity in the church. Now, I have the, the greatest pleasure to serve at the Assumption of the Theotokos Cathedral here in Denver, okay? This is the cathedral. And one of the things about being a reader and being an acolyte and working around the altar is that I get to meet so many men. When I tell these fathers, okay, um, that what, what we're doing, this missional effort to try to go after and tell the black community about their full inheritance, okay? They are elated mm -hmm. and excited and they want to know how they can help. And there's a lot of clergy that comes to the cathedral, brother. A lot of clergy from all over the, I mean, we have, you know, now we have our assistant bishop, um, uh, our auxiliary bishop, that is his grace, Constantine of Sassima. If you are watching, peace be with you. Dear, dear Bishop, we love you and we appreciate your patience and what you're doing in, in, in the metropolis. Um, and to any of those who are watching, um, they are elated about this work, brother. I mean, it, they, are, they, they are astonished, actually, which makes me believe. Now, these guys have been in the priesthood for 40, 50 years, okay? And they're saying, wow, they're shocked that this is actually happening. There is momentum, but we have to harness it. Now, we can't go about it the, the ways that we used to do it before, like, you know, just kind of ignoring it. I mean, some things that, for example, when we see and when we are talking about this, so, so people are probably going to listen to this and, and this series of all these wonderful speakers, okay? And they're going to be, I'm going to go to an Orthodox church, you know. Um, there are things that we need to consider, you know, when we have black people come to the church. Number one, the iconography is going to be a problem straight off the bat because they don't understand that they are written and they're telling a story about Jesus. They're looking at the white skin, you know, and they're going to come in. I've had people come to the cathedral, black folks that I know they came through and they love the liturgy. But with this society that we're living in, which is actually so racist right now and so divided, you know, everything is about my belief, my truth, 
you know, this is what I believe. You're going to respect me, not only respect me, but you could better celebrate me, you know, mm -hmm. on top of that. You know, this is where we are. So we have to be sensitive to these things, but we have to be ready to answer these questions when they come in, because we're talking about a people without an identity. Mm -hmm. They come from actual slaves of over 450 years. Okay. So that, that, that mentality they grew up with and they're coming in and we have to be ready to receive them. And we have to answer those very hard questions. Absolutely. But they are coming. And another thing I'm going to say about young men, I've been meeting a lot of young men coming to the church and they're drawn to me. So they're drawn to me and they ask me all these questions. These are black kids that come in. Okay. Or, 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 you know, biracial kids, but you have a black father, you know, white mother or whatever, but they have the black experience is what I'm saying. What I am seeing like me, they came from a father's home. So even though they are Orthodox, it's not so much they, they, they love God and they want to know, but I think it's more of they're looking for somebody to listen to them. They're looking for some, they're looking for direction, mentorship. We have to, I've had fathers, I'm 43 years old, folks. And I'm still looking for an effective spiritual father, okay, that I can trust, that I can get mentor. Now, Father Chris, <laughs> he moved and went to Arizona. He has done his work. And Father Chris, if you're watching this, I love you very much and peace be with you. You know, it, it is, he has taught me so much. And let me tell you my experience with Father Chris. 2020, I, I reached out. I seen the video of Father Chris on YouTube. You know, I almost had a million views and he was just so real. And it was here in Denver. I've driven by the cathedral my entire life. But because it said Greek Orthodox Cathedral, I didn't go because I thought it was only for Greek people. I never went. It was at his invitation that I came to liturgy. When I went to liturgy, I didn't understand the language, but my soul was right mm -hmm. and it accepted it and it sounded right. And when I picked up the prayer book and I read that it's not about my personality and what I'm telling you, but it's all about Christ. And it's all about God. Mm -hmm. And it fed my soul to the point to where I didn't know what was being said, but it was right. I'm saying to my people, come home and experience it. Get out of your head. It is going to be different. Be courageous. Be a free thinker, be a critical thinker, and come home and see. There's nothing wrong with coming. There's nothing wrong with coming and seeing. And you will experience the grace of God, the reverence for God, the worship for God, the oh God. hunger for God. You will see it and you will experience it. Get out of your head. Get out of this white versus black. You know, Protestant versus Catholic, Protestant versus Orthodox. We're waiting for you to mm -hmm. come because this is your inheritance. I don't, we can keep talking about this over and over, but this is a free invitation for you all to come and experience the fullness of the Christian faith. If you say you're a Christian, this is your inheritance. I will drop it there. And I'm God. yelling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for yelling. Yo. It's okay. It's okay. Yo. You're in good space. All right. <laughs> so our final question for the evening, we, you and I have had uh, several conversations about the subject on where is the place and value for the Black expression within Orthodox tradition and worship. This is a timeless experience that goes back, as you said, as far as 450 years ago in slavery and the birth of the seven traditional uh, Protestant confessions within the black church tradition. Where do you see that experience uh, and its value within the Orthodox tradition? Of course, we have mm. several ethnic traditions that are expressed within the church. Uh, where do you see the black tradition fit in? And is there a place to one day see a divine liturgy fully immersed within the Black 
experience mm -hmm. in this tradition of music. And of course, <laughs> preaching, which you just shared a little bit of. <laughs> I think the full expression of the Black experience in the Orthodox Church would be absolutely magnificent. It would be something the world has never seen. And that's not an overstatement. Okay. It would be a display of prayer, uh, brokenness, um, and total surrender to God. All right. It would be in unison. I believe that our people would actually pray during the liturgy together in unison on key and on and very intentional about worshiping God. One thing about black people that people don't know, we're very passionate, we're very charismatic people and we do things over the top anyway. So if we're talking about a kingdom and if we're talking about beauty and if we're talking about holiness, which the Protestant church, there is a real dearth mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I was drawn to the Orthodox Church was the reverence, the prostrations that we do, the prayers that we do, the kneelings that we do in front of God. It's one long, beautiful prayer and supplication to God. It is not about my own personality, okay? So if we're talking about an African-American experience, my God, I believe that a lot of its tenants and a lot of its tenor will be ex uh, um, extracted from that. Um, and people will see it and they will try to employ it in their own parishes because our passion and our desperation for God, straight desperation. Every day I get up, I mean, even when I was searching for the truth and I began and I, and I learned and I began to ask God, Lord, help me to understand your wisdom. Let me, help me understand what it is to be a true Christian. And I was led to the Orthodox Church. And now my prayer is, Lord, my soul longs for you. And my will serves you always. Always. Glory to God for all things. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So these things we have been praying for years out of desperation, and we're still praying them. The thing about it is, I am tired of seeing the shepherd shear the sheep and then make a suit out of it. Meaning, mm -hmm. using the people for what they have, using the people for what they can get, meaning vanity and materialism. But if we had a Black Orthodox church in our expression, it would be something that the world has never seen. And it would be very, very powerful. And it would go all around the world. It would. So that's coming. Now, I asked this question. And I was talking to my sister Joanna today about this. And we were talking about, you know, what that church would look like. And the question came up, well, what if the Black church had majority black iconography would that be a problem i said maybe not you know maybe not because this is our expression this is what we do i mean if i were me if i had an american church i would have all races represented okay in the church so where when you come in you see yourself right you see yourself Right. That's what you see yourself. And so you don't right. feel like you're just surrounded by all these white icons. And what is this all about? And I don't know, you know, and, and, and that's the thing. And that's what they get into when they come into the cathedral. They see all of this. And it's like and I have to explain it to them. It's not about the color, dear. It's mm -hmm. not about the color. It's about their life and their testimony for Christ. That is what we want to understand. What did they teach? What did they if they're on the wall and if they're a saint? then that means they were one with God and they displayed the fruit of the spirit. And it goes all the way back to St. Seraphim of Sarah, which is one of my favorite saints that I read all the time. You know, if you, huh, I feel my help, brother. If you, <laughs> if you 
acquire the Holy Spirit, then a thousand around you will be saved. Now, I have four godchildren, and I've only been two and a half years in the church. My spiritual father, Father Chris, taught me how to be practical, taught me how to love people, taught me how to accept people, taught me not how to, how to see people as the icon of Christ. As the saints saw no guile in anyone, none. He, he often ridiculed me, Lord, and this is my godson, Moses, Arison. Arison, if you're watching this, I'm telling the story. So we went to a, a steakhouse, and this is, I was fresh out of Pentecostalism, bro, fresh out, okay? And we went to a steakhouse, really nice steakhouse, and he was eclectic. Mm -hmm. you know, he had fingernail polish on and all this stuff, and, and I'm looking at him, and I just asked him are you a gay man or whatever? And Father Chris, <laughs> Father Chris got me on that. And he's like, you just can't say things like that. You have to really get to know a person, walk in their shoes to understand where they're coming from. The other day, I was outside again, two o'clock in the morning, a guy named Philip, let's pray for Philip, you know, for his salvation and his peace. Um, he was coming off and he asked me, um a question do you have a cigarette i was like well no i don't i used to smoke but i don't smoke anymore <laughs> you know and i was like i don't have a cigarette and then he began to talk to me he's like well you know i know it's late but can you get me some hot water okay um because i have some noodles in my bag and i just need to eat and i haven't eaten so i came in and got him some new uh, some hot water and then i also made him a care package Right. And I put some noodles in there, chips in there, and groceries, and I handed it to him and I gave him 40 bucks, you know what I mean, to send him on his way. He began to tell me after I did that, he began to tell me a lot about his life. He did nine years in state penitentiary. Mm. Young man. I mean, young. His heart was beautiful. This is the first time that I actually looked upon somebody and did not see who he was, meaning his sin. He's dirty. He's this, he's that. All I did was embrace him with his dirty clothes. I kissed him on his forehead, his dirty forehead, and I loved on him. And it was such a wonderful moment to where I never want anybody to walk away from me and not feel and know the love of God at all. So I witnessed to him. I didn't overbury him, but I witnessed to him and I told him, I'm praying for you and things of that nature. I'm telling you, that in this church, I have learned to live the Christian life. I have learned not to be all about myself. One of the things, okay, I'm, I, I hope I'm not rambling. You hearing me, right? You're fine, you know? you're fine. You're okay, fine. okay. One of the things that I learned that was hard for me when I first joined the church was this prayer. Now, coming up in the Pentecostal church, we always talked about the prayer wheel, get that prayer wheel turning, and then that prayer wheel keeps turning, and that prayer wheel keeps turning. That is something that the Father said, the warming of the heart, you know, mm -hmm. get that prayer wheel turning. There was the other day when I got up, and I started praying here at my icon corner, and I sat in my chair with my prayer rope at three in the morning, and I got lost in prayer. I woke, I came to at like 7 45 mm. it was like time stopped and i was able to pray and every time that i tried to pray for myself the lord would brought, bring somebody up in my spirit that needs to be prayed that needs to be prayed for the lord would bring somebody up in my spirit that needs to be anytime i try to address myself that is one thing it is a we we're a family over here it is a mm. we it's not, Lord, bless me, Lord, help me, Lord. No, if we are praying for every, God already knows what we have need of, mm -hmm. okay? We already know. All we need to do is pray for others and ask God for mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And you'd be surprised that that little prayer actually transforms you. Mm -hmm. The fathers were right. Mm -hmm. So- the black church expression would be powerful, okay, because we know these principles already, all right, and it would be our expression, but I believe it would be something so beautiful.
and so powerful and something that we would be proud of, Americans we'd be proud of because it will serve all people, but it will be a place that black people, Orthodox people that are coming, I prophesy that today, that you are coming, you are. You're going to realize your inheritance. You're going to see it because we are going to defeat the demons of ignorance. We are going to defeat the demons of willful ignorance through the power and the grace and the, and the, and the, and the salvation of our Christ and our God. So this is something we're working on. I believe this is something that is going to happen. But this is a heavy lift, my brother, and you and I have a lot of work to do. But with fear, we cry out in the middle of the night, right? Holy, mm. holy, holy is the Lord, our God, through the Holy Theotokos, have mercy on us. As we pray, as we fast, as we go forward, going to get these people, God is going to get the glory. So whatever church is built, whoever comes in the church, it is by God's grace. And thank Amen. God that I was counted worthy to be a part of such a magnificent move of God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, dear brother, we thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. And to our viewers, dear brothers and sisters, we look forward to seeing you again. Our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you always with the prayers of the Holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.